Academic journals and publishers are often thought of as the gatekeepers of sharing scientific findings. But what really goes on behind the scenes at a journal like Science Magazine? I'm here at Stanford University for an academic publishing conference hosted by Highwire Press to get a sneak peek at the world of publishing. Let's ask some questions. Our scholarly publishing has a real structure to it, in part because it's used to uh, apply for grants, get tenure, uh, get essentially get status and recognition for your work. Well, one of the main reasons is, it, is that the material is, is peer-reviewed and um, goes through a, a rigorous process before it's published. And authors are given a chance to revise. And they might be rejected from one journal and submit to another, and the paper gets peer-reviewed everywhere um, at each step. People are publishing because they want their research to be used, to be seen, to be out there, to be added to. Um, but it's also a uh, you know, publisher parish. You, you need it for your own academic future. There's a, definitely a different audience. They're looking for different things. You know, as you know, as a researcher, or especially if you're working on your thesis, you're working on your own research. You know that there are specific pieces that you need to find. So I think one of the biggest goals of academic publishing is making sure that a journal is, is uh, working to attract the authors. In the old days, we would just expect authors to come to us because we were a long-time uh, revered journal in the field or whatever. Uh, but now there's, there's a lot of journals out there. And a lot of those are commercial journals. They're out there to make money. Um, but there are also many society journals. So our journal is associated with the society. Um, and there, the point there is not to make money be sustainable. Commercial journals are excellent as well, they can be very good. Nature Science, they're commercial, um, but there's a different motivation there. One of the biggest things that I think has really become standard now are things like continuous publishing. Papers are kind of published as they're ready. Moving away from the traditional publishing date being the date that an article is in print, and it's, it's more along the lines of as soon as it appears online, and that could be even the pre-edited form, as long as the research is out there. When you're talking about essentially uh, climate science, uh, areas like that, there's a lot more interest in moving information into the public sphere, but I'd say especially into the policy sphere. We all want the policymakers to be making evidence-based decisions, so you'd like them to base it on science uh, rather than on politics or religion or something like that. Open access itself works really well there. Academics at places like Stanford and other major institutions don't need open access so much because their institutions already subscribe to everything. But if you want uh, a, a policymaker in your your state senate uh, to have access to your work, you might want to publish it in an open access journal because they'll have access to it. Yeah, people are getting rid of the print journal, so now the, the online journal is the journal record. And so it, is, it offers opportunities for faster turnarounds, for more color, for um, different types of images, for 3D imaging, for videos, and all of that kind of thing. A lot of bells and whistles, and a different way to communicate science. And scientific communication is really a subset of all communication. Uh, more and more, everybody is going to be using the tools that you would just expect to have access to. iPhones, iPads, uh, but also blog posting tools like WordPress and, and Twitter and mm -hmm. Facebook and so on are really part of how we communicate. We'll start to see much more video in the research literature because there's so many tools now for creating video and sharing video. When you sort of um, change the article into something that is um, more dynamic, this, you don't just sit somewhere quietly to read, you do have a possibility of attracting a much broader audience, you know, bring people into an, an area that they didn't know they were interested in. And get them excited about it. Yeah, get them excited about it.